California is quite large. If it were its own country, it would rank 59th in the world by land area. Having been born and raised in the state, I've only recently discovered how much I've been neglecting to discover it. California is home to such a variety of wilderness that I couldn't just let it exist without me experiencing it. So I asked myself what better way to experience that wilderness than by going to two tourist attractions up north. The attractions in particular, the Redwood Skywalk in Eureka and the Redwood Canopy Trail in the Trees of Mystery in Klamath. It would be a long trip, but nothing easy was achieved without a journey, right? I mean, if a tourist attraction is built and you're not around to see it, does it make a sound? Or I don't know how the quote goes. It would be a two-day trip, starting at 5 a.m. Highway 101 was the primary method of traversal here, and I was a bit in awe of how gradually the traces of the metropolitan areas just vanish until nature becomes the dominant occupant of the land flanking the road. Okay, I'm nowhere near the hotel. I'm still an hour and a half away from Eureka, but I had to stop because this, this view you're about to see is kind of insane. So while I stand by my claim that the view was truly insane in the membrane, the video does not do it justice at all. Eventually, I made it to Eureka and checked into my hotel, which I neglected to look up the reviews for prior to reserving it. Don't worry, I checked the reviews the night before when my cancellation window had closed, but that was okay because according to the past guest, it was one of the worst hotels in the area. I'm pretty sure there's supposed to be the other half of the towel rack right there. No wonder it was so cheap. Okay, there's a door over there, a door over here, but why is there a desk in front of it? Some of the reviews did complain of there being meth stains and bed bug carcasses. Whatever, I was just there to sleep for the night, not actually enjoy the place. I've just arrived in Eureka and uh, it's 12 o'clock noon. I haven't eaten since last night. I uh, made it a point not to eat before the trip so that I wouldn't have to make so many pit stops along the way. Um, but now I'm hungry, so let's get something to eat. I made my way to Christina's, a diner where all-day breakfast was served, and served I was, as I was given more food than I could possibly finish, and I finished it. Before long, I made it to the Redwood Skywalk, and it was time to capture it in all its glory. The Redwood Skywalk is located inside the Sequoia Park Zoo, and it's a series of canopy bridges that run from Redwood Tree to Redwood Tree. It's designed to help you tap into an enhanced interpretation of the redwoods. There are the tallest trees in the world, and walking among them via these canopies helps in providing a better understanding of their ecology. I like and kind of don't like this photo. I like it because the absence of any sort of floor or bottom gives you a sense of the height of the skywalk and thus the immense scale of the redwoods. I kind of don't like it because this guy was looking right at me when I thought I was a lot stealthier than that. Clearly, I don't have a future in private investigative work. This photo is totally it. A playoff contender, for sure. What I liked about the Skywalk was that there are two segments of it. The first segment is made up of flat bridges, making it ADA accessible and friendly for people of all ages and walking abilities. The other segment is made up of cable suspended bridges that, for lack of a better term, are wobbly. But it's by design to be a more exciting experience. This photo isn't much, just a shot of a tree that, uh, has probably seen better days, but I took some creative liberties in the edit and I like it. This photo is nearly it. It's so close to being it, but there are so many different pockets of light 
that it's difficult to discern the subject resting on the log in the center. Sequoia Park Zoo is a fairly small zoo, but still pretty cool nonetheless, and worth the price of admission. In the barnyard, the humans were ogling the sheep and goats, but those very sheep and goats were fixated on something else. This gal, who I'm guessing was the office cutie. One of them even got closer for a better look. Everyone was looking. I mean, even this emo guy in the corner couldn't take his eyes off of her. Probably while he was listening to My Chemical Romance or something. Anyway, realizing he didn't have a chance with her, he walked away, but not before trying to sneak a peek at his co-worker's rear end. After he had realized I caught him slacking, he begged me not to release the photo out into the world because he had, and I quote, a career and a family. But I said, sorry buddy, you're cancelled. Even in the animal kingdom, the workplace still has pigs. Speaking of pigs, shout out to the homie Frankie here for being a real one and smiling at the camera. Why is this alpaca so photogenic? Who knows? It was probably a model in a previous life. Eventually, I left the zoo and went beyond Eureka's borders into Samoa. Not Samoa Samoa, but rather Samoa, California, a census-designated place off the coast and on the barrier island that encloses Arcata Bay. While there was plenty of beach to explore, my attention was glued to the other side where I took this photo, and honestly, it almost looks like a painting, and I enjoy it very much. Here is an alternate interpretation of the same point of interest where I attempt a long exposure that clearly didn't work out, but it's fine. Beyond this building down the road was another building that was enveloped in haze, making it seem farther than it was and more mysterious. This photo isn't it, so I tried again, but in a different spot. I think I gotta get closer. I gotta get closer and make the road a leading line towards the building. And if I can do that, then it'll be a better photo. I basically have to put myself on the road to get the photo. Not really on the road, on the side of the road, but yeah. And yes, this one is a banger. The road leads the viewer's eyes to the structure and compels us to ponder just how close or how far the building really is. It sort of reminds me of Final Fantasy XV, or I don't know, the, the one where the four boy band members travel in a car. I only put a few hours into that game, so I, I don't know much about it. My next stop was beyond Samoa and into a place called Manila. Not Manila, Manila, but rather Manila, California, a census designated place off the coast, and you get the picture. I was eager to walk along its dunes to get to its beaches. And yeah, I don't know if I was just tired or if there was some otherworldly happenings here, but it felt like the dunes were practically endless. Every dune mount I crested, it seemed like another one was waiting for me up ahead, and the coast didn't seem to get any closer. Concerned that I would lose my sense of direction and be forever lost in the spice, or however Arrakis and spice works, I decided to head back and call it a day. The most uncomfortable thing about this motel for me is this shower's shade of blue. The last time anybody used the shade of blue on a shower is when they used lead and lead pencils. Anyway, after getting nearly zero sleep that night because I had no idea what a meth stain or bed bug carcass looked like, and for all I knew I was sleeping in a bed full of them, I went to charge the problematic Mobile 3000 in preparation for the trip to Klamath and the Trees of Mystery. 
Little did I know, my morning was about to be disrupted by a bombing raid. After seeking shelter in my car and being spared from the worst of the enemy's air campaign, I took this photo. But oh how naive I was, uh, not again. as another bomber group was on its way to finish the job. And if you think I was being dramatic, well, say that to my car. The city of Eureka is nice, especially the drivers. They all drove the speed limit, which was quite a culture shock to someone like me who's from the Bay Area, where our drivers see a school zone and make it a point to slam the accelerator. Being in Eureka, where every driver was safe, careful, and considerate of their fellow motorists and pedestrians, made me feel like someone who's been in nothing but toxic relationships their whole life, only to finally be in a healthy one and immediately panic because of the trauma they've endured for too long. Since the trees of mystery were my only destination for the day, I had more leeway to stop and capture some photos as golden hour began that morning. With the exception of the crop, I made no edits to this photo. It's just too good the way it is. I tried a different exposure setting and captured this, also unedited, but I don't know which is better. The area between Eureka and Klamath is so scenic, it's kind of surreal. It makes you wonder how you're even still in California. I saw these elk and initially kept driving because I figured they'd still be there when I got back, but this spot wasn't an attraction, the wild elk just decided to rest there. These elk were totally chilling. They didn't consider me a threat at all as I invaded their space, taking photos and videos of them. I suppose you could say, elk and I are just bros like that. You might as well call me the elk whisperer. Well, me and the other people that were there, I guess. I had finally made it to the Trees of Mystery, a place made up of interpretive trails showcasing trees with unique formations. Don't be scared by the word trails. The trails are walkable and don't slope or curve too much, which you may be relieved to hear. Speaking of relief, I was certainly eager to experience it after the drive. If you looked at their map, you'd most certainly be reminded of an amusement park. Like the scenic views earlier, the video does not do the scale of these trees justice. Remember how I said the Redwood Skywalk at Sequoia Park Zoo had a segment where it was a flat bridge and then the other segment was suspended bridges? The Redwood Canopy Trail at the Trees of Mystery is suspended bridges all throughout, and they feel even wobblier. If I had to describe the Canopy Trail in one word, I'd say harrowing, because you feel higher, the bridges feel looser, and there were moments where the ground seemed almost obscured due to how dense the trees were. If the park organizers wanted to express how towering the Redwoods were, well, mission accomplished.
The other attraction at the Trees of Mystery is Sky Trail, a gondola that travels over 1,500 feet up a mountain where you can experience stunning views over the course of 8 to 10 minutes. Or at least, I think the views were stunning. Let's just say when the gondola sounds like this throughout the ride, a ride, might I add, that got so high I couldn't see the ground, it's a bit hard for me to appreciate the views over the sound of my rapid breathing. Why is, why is the gondola making that noise? Now at the top of the mountain and hopped up with adrenaline, it was time to experience Wilderness Trail, a trail adjacent to the gondola that visitors can hike as a means of getting to both ends of the gondola points. Going down the mountain on this trail was recommended for advanced hikers only. And while I don't consider myself an advanced hiker, I once ate an entire party size bag of hot Cheetos, so that probably made me qualified. So that's it. That was the trip. It was over 700 miles in total of driving and it was worth it. Out of the 36 photos I took, I'd pick these for the playoffs. Maybe you're watching this and you're deciding between visiting the Redwood Skywalk or doing the Redwood Canopy Trail. You should do both, particularly if you're traveling from south of Eureka but let's say you only have time for one of these attractions. The Skywalk and Canopy Trail both reach heights of 100 feet. The Skywalk is about a quarter of a mile long, and while I don't know the length of the Canopy Trail, I certainly felt it was an appropriate length and comparable to the Skywalk. A significant portion of the Skywalk is ADA accessible, the Canopy Trail is not ADA accessible. The Canopy Trail felt more immersive due to the density of the trees surrounding it. While they both claim similar heights, the Canopy Trail felt higher. The Skywalk is good if you want to focus on the ecology and walk from tree to tree at a leisurely pace. If you want a more thrilling experience from tree to tree, then the Canopy Trail is more up your alley. Basically, it boils down to how clean do you want your pants to be after you walk these things. While I did use scary words like wobbly earlier to describe these bridges, let me just say that there was clearly a lot of thought in the design of these attractions. At both, I overheard people complimenting the engineering and at no point during my experience was I in danger. I just felt in danger particularly on the canopy trail. I don't want to pick one, but if you cornered me using a bag of stinky tofu and forced me to choose, lest I'd have to eat said tofu, then it would be the trees of mystery. The canopy trail, the sky trail, and the rest of the park is incredibly interesting, but what complements the tree of mystery isn't so much the park itself, but the drive going there. Traveling through Humboldt County and going into Del Norte County is an experience in and of itself. There were countless moments where I wanted to stop and just explore. The diversity of Highway 101 alone is reason to make the drive. As someone who has traversed my familiar stretch of Highway 101 throughout my entire life, encountering its multiple lanes and bumper to bumper traffic, I was astounded to witness the colossal 101 highway I knew transform into a mere two lane road, sometimes capped by a 35 mile per hour speed limit. The transformation occurred as it wound through places like Ulrich, where the entrances to these shops and homes stood just a few feet from one of the nation's most vital corridors of commerce. I'd like to visit the area again. Not only the wilderness portions, but also the cities, towns, and census designated places like Auric. If anything, because I'd like to experience the serenity of being around drivers who actually behave as if they like humanity, unlike Bay Area drivers who double their speed upon sight of a baby stroller. <laughs>